I feel like we could be in Greece right now. Totally feel like we could be in Greece right now. My name is Jess. I live in Sonoma County, California, and I am cooking my way around the world 500 miles at a time. This week, we're in Kefalonia, Greece. We've made it to Kefalonia. To be clear, I'm not really in Kefalonia. I'm just a woman in California wishing that she were in an outdoor cafe in Greece. In fact... I feel better already. So, like I was saying, here we are in Kefalonia and we have got a lot to do. If I really were in Kefalonia, I think the first thing that I would do is go for a bike ride and just kind of explore, get the general vibe, check out the rugged countryside. Then I would hop on a ferry to the next island over to visit Navigio Beach. Navigio Beach has this epic shipwreck on it. I mean, look at this, it's amazing. If that is not a day trip worth taking, I don't know what is. I think probably my final destination would be an olive mill. I've been cooking my way along the Mediterranean now. This is my fourth destination on the 38th parallel and everything has been using ample amounts of olive oil. So Greece seems like a good place to kind of stop and appreciate the olive and all that it provides. So this week, bike rides, shipwrecks, olive trees, and we're gonna do some cooking. We've got a lot to do. Let's get going. Greek week. We're at Tole Lake Regional Park. We're gonna go for a bike ride. Uh, we're gonna pretend we're in Greece. Viva Kefalonia. Although Viva's not Greek, but. question. Hordo, like horticulture. Hordo, like horticulture maybe? I don't know. We don't really know. Google, we're gonna find out. You will learn. By the end of this video, everyone's gonna know what does hordo pizza mean. All right, so we are making hordo pizza today, which is basically, um, I did my research. Uh, Opita means pie. And horto means greens, so we're making uh, gr green pie today. Sounds delicious. And I am realizing perhaps part of the Greek cooking adventure is going to be searching for a new baking pan. Because the biggest baking pan I have is this one. It's like a cake size pan. I think it's 8 by 8 Which is good because there's only two of us in the house plus Amelia, the dog. But maybe I need a bigger baking pan for like the future when the pandemic is over and I can socialize again and I want to make more than two people's worth of horto pita. So, but for now, we're good. We're gonna make a little tiny horto pita in a little tiny pan. That. It's perfect temperature. Mm. 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 It's really good. Yeah. I can see clearly. Mm -hmm. I can see, I can feel the. My eyes are working better. <laughs> yeah. No, it's delicious. That's all I can say. Try it. I think she approved. All right. So we're off. Where are we going? We're gonna pick up our veggies. It's Vegetable Tuesday. That's right. We go to the farm. We're going to the farm. And we're working 
need to go with this. Oh, there's a little pipette with us. Oh, she's so cute. We have the cutest dog. making fennel leek onion chickpea soup the recipe looks good never had it before well, let's see how it goes we're gonna try it out the garlic. Alright, we're adding our chickpeas. Okay, we've got the rind of our Pecorino Romano. Three bay leaves. We've got about a quarter of a teaspoon of chili flakes. All right, so we're making uh, braised cauliflower and potatoes tonight to go with our soup. So that's gonna be one head of cauliflower, two potatoes, two tablespoons of tomato paste, three cloves, and three whole allspice berries, and one cinnamon stick. And it's supposed to make a nice dish that's kind of like, could be a side, could be a main. So that sounds like a, I think that would go well with soup. So that's the idea tonight. We're having soup, soup and potatoes and vegetables. It's a very winter, winter at home type meal. So here we go. I will tell you what, the Greeks really do use a ton of olive oil. Like it's not, it's no joke, like every dish has like half a cup of olive oil in it, which is delicious. It's coming out really, really well. Um, I've just never used so much oil in my life. I usually put like a tablespoon of oil in the bottom of my pan, so I don't know, maybe I'm learning to use more olive oil. We'll see. I gotta say, so far the Greek food, I didn't think I was gonna like Greek food, ironically because I thought it was really greasy, but so far everything is really nice, tasty, wholesome, and not greasy at all. So, so far two thumbs up for Greek food. Turns out we like Greek food. That's great. Okay, so we're gonna put, we've got our, our olive oil has heated up and we're gonna put all of our, basically all the vegetables and spices in and let them saute and get a little brown. So that's our first step. So I am a little worried that our pot is not big enough or that we are using too much cauliflower because it's, Filled to the brim and I'm not sure how we're supposed to... How do you brown all the cauliflower if it's all stuck up that much? I'm not sure, maybe we're screwing this up. We'll see. All right, we're tossing in the spices. Like I am. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. We're doing our best. Okay. We're putting the lid on. We're lowering the heat. And we're gonna let it simmer for half an hour. That's what we're eating tonight. Mm-hmm. That looks good. It looks really good. It looks delicious. Yeah. So well, first course is soup. How is it? It's very good. That's good. It just tastes like good, hearty, and wholesome, you know? Yeah, olive oil. The, olive, the green of the olive oil is really good. Was it a lot of olive oil? Yes. Oh, you can taste the olive oil. I just had some uh, some cheese, like feta. Pecorino. Pecorino. The rind of a pecorino. The rind of a pecorino, that's smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can taste that. It gives like a little yeah. rustic flavor. 
That's spicy. Thumbs up. Thumbs up? Yeah. Ranked it ranked out of ten. What would you say? Well, nothing's perfect. Nothing's per no human work is perfect. But I give it a good eight. Okay. Maybe eight and a half. I mean, just, you know, it's just a soup, so there's nothing really fancy about it. Delicious dish. Mm. Very good. This is a chickpea, yeah? Chickpeas. Yeah. People of Greece, two thumbs up. Yeah. You did a good job. This looks good, too. Cinnamon, no? Did you put cinnamon? Mm -hmm. It's got cinnamon, allspice and cloves in it. Lots of cloves Lots of in cloves. Greek food. I was surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised A lot of too. cloves. Let's try it. I think I overcooked the broccoli. No. I think they're great. Do you like it? You know what I like about this? Okay. The uh, the warmth of the cauliflower with the coolness, coolness of the, the feta. It's a good little... Uh, yeah. Like, you're in Greece. But you're not at the beach. You're like up in the mountains in like a little stone cottage surrounded by like a whole bunch of sheep. You've been out with the sheep all day. Then you come back and you're like, oh, a simple meal of cauliflower yeah. potatoes. I guess it could be good cheese. with like blue it's cheese, good. you know, made of sheep. Mm hmm. Is feta not made of sheep? Yeah. It's made of sheep. But, mm -hmm. but I think the hawkfowl is made of sheep. Or you say you wish this was more like a French food again? No. No, I'm <laughs> so saying. Is that gonna be the theme of this entire project? <laughs> it would be like, well, it would be better if it was French. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is, it's like, if if you put Roquefort, you just have suddenly more flavor. Uh, like, you're so bad. She's flavor. <laughs> but this is perfect. I like think it it's really good the way it is. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. I like it a lot. I wish I was in a little shepherd's cottage. In the Greek mountains. With and mold growing on your sheep yes, cheese. Yes, with mold growing on my sheep cheese. That would make your heart fall. Yeah. It's good. It goes well with the soup too. It's mm -hmm. like the whole thing just feels like winter meal. You want a piece of feta papa? Huh? Can you sit? Oh, you're such a good girl. There we go. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna go see a, an old boat. Okay, so it's another day in another Greek recipe, which honestly is turning out pretty good so far. I think Greek food is pretty good. And uh, tonight we're making kreato pita, which is a meat pie. So we are returning to the phyllo dough, which is kind of fun because the last time that I cooked with phyllo dough was the, I think the first time I've ever used phyllo dough. So it's kind of a new experience for me. The horto pita pie that we had the other day was just super tasty and pretty light. And so, I don't know. It's later in the week, we can do something heavier. Okay, here we go. So can we start by acknowledging once again the crazy amount of olive oil that goes into these recipes. Like, a whole cup of olive oil. That seems excessive to me. All right, here we go, one cup of oil in the pot. So I will say, it, uh, it looks pretty good. It's just gonna be like 
really rich and heavy. This is like heart attack pie, Sam. <laughs> this is such a change from, I was like, oh, it's so, everything's plant-based and it's so tasty, like the green pie and the, it's gonna be good, but geez Louise, we're adding an entire cup of, we're adding an entire cup of cheese to this. Nothing to complain about. Let's take a look at the recipe really quickly. When the meat is ready, mix it well with all the other ingredients and then add the rice last. I am assuming that that means uncooked rice. Uh, in case we didn't cover this already, I don't actually know how to cook, so part of this journey is learning how to cook. So I'm assuming you're, we're putting uncooked rice in here, kind of like we did with the arosa banda. Um, but I'm being a little anxious, honestly. <laughs> this is, we're a little outside the comfort zone here. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> There we go. The rice is in. We didn't cook the rice ahead of time. Okay. We're also supposed to add an egg to this, uh, which we didn't do yet. So we're gonna do that right now. It's like a giant tub of grease. Like it's just a big, and then we're gonna make it into like croissant pie. I'm telling you with the like, with the camera and the cooking, like, the, it quickly devolves into absolute chaos in here. Like, I... Oh! Alright, we're preheating the oven. Forgot to do that. Alright, we're gonna take our phyllo dough. Well, the, the good news is, I think it's all gonna fit into the one pan. So, all my drama about needing a new pan was unfounded. We are fine with the pans that we have. Because it's a pandemic and no one can come over. Super curious if the rice is supposed to be cooked before it goes in. I mean, it's going to be in the oven for an hour, so I'm figuring the rice is going to cook. But um, the recipe was incredibly vague. It just said add the rice. So I assume that that means the uncooked rice. Smooth it out. Morphe low dough. God, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Normally when I make a pie, I would cut vents into the top of it, but it does not say to do that in the directions, and we're trying to be authentic here. So we're not gonna cook vents in it, um, and hopefully, hopefully that's okay. We'll see. Okay, see you in an hour. It's not going well. I hate this stuff. Okay, so that did not go well. Just smoke it out, I put it in the closet. So it's in the oven at 350 and it's filled with uncooked rice so, <laughs> so it needs to cook. Don't think it's gonna cook. All right well we got 45 seconds left. This has not gone well. There will not be any side vegetables tonight. We'll just say that. Well sorry people of Greece. This one's a dud. Yeah whoever wrote that whoever wrote recipe. That recipe Needs to Needs work. To so the weather has officially taken a turn. <laughs> but honestly, it feels a little bit more seasonally appropriate. It's January, and uh, who do we think we are going for a bike ride in tank tops in the middle of January? This is, seem, this is honestly better. But um, it's kind of cozy, so I think today is a good day to make the almond cake. I think we're going to make... Maybe at lunchtime we'll, we'll throw together the almond cake. Um, yeah, should be good. Should be better than last night's meat pie. Last night's meat pie was horrible. I still feel kind of gross from the meat pie, I have to say. It was like a cheeseburger pie. Anyway. Okay, we are gonna make amygdalo pita, which is a Greek almond cake, and it involves making egg whites, or turning egg whites into stiff peaks, which is something I've never done before, and honestly, I don't bake that much. So we're gonna learn how to bake today. And then there's gonna be a syrup with this too, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. So for now, our first step is beating the eggs, creating our stiff peaks. Okay, I'm not sure if that's a stiff peak. I'm not about to, I'm not gonna tip it on my head. My peaks look rather stiff. I think that's, hopefully that's good enough. Is 
the weirdest looking cake batter I've ever seen. I hope it works out. Usually it doesn't. While our cake is baking, we're gonna make the syrup that gets poured over the cake. Fingers crossed. All right, so we've got our um, sugar, water, cloves, and cinnamon. They've been boiling for about 10 minutes, so we're gonna take it off the heat and let it cool. Rolling the tray. It looks like a cake. It looks like a cake. Well, that seems ridiculous. All right, so we're going to McAvoy Ranch, which is a uh, sustainable olive farm. We found an olive farm right here in town. So we're gonna go check out the ranch. Maybe we're gonna get some olives. But yeah, that's, I hope they're gonna give us some olives. I think we're. I think there's no free tastings because of COVID. Oh uh, yeah, so it's not free, but if we buy it, it's, we can taste it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so, what's your favorite kind of olive, Sam? I like the green one. I think they call. Uh, well, they've got different types, of course. Cata, something, cassa, Kalamata. No, I think they're kind of better. Are they black or they're brown. red? Yeah. yeah. How beautiful! Already. <laughs> I already like it. Yeah, it looks like we're going into a canyon. Yeah. It's so pretty. We've got cypress trees. We've got olive trees. I feel like we could be in Greece right now. I totally feel like we could be in Greece right now. It's great. Nice, it was all of those cypress. Yeah. Cypress are kind of a cool one. Oh, look at that. It must be programmed <laughs> by olives. It's like they knew we were coming. Officially say olive trees. Check. We did it. I'm gonna buy some olives, I think. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna buy some olives. Hey, general thought so far? They have olives. They have olives. And olive trees. <laughs> and olive trees. It was fun. It was fun. It was it was great. It was great. It was very pretty. Yeah. It was very pretty. And we got our first souvenir from yeah, our trip yeah, to yeah. Greece. We got some olives. We got some olives. We saw some coyotes. We saw coyotes. Two. Two coyotes. Two coyotes. We saw olive trees. It was sunny. It was really nice. They have a yeah. really nice property. And I believe springtime was going to be beautiful with all of those yeah. lavender and the olives growing. Yeah. It would be pretty nice, I think. Yeah, we should come back. Yeah, let's try Well, let's, let's try their olives first and see if they're any good. Do you want to open the jar now? We can. Oh, we might not be able to open those. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, holy crow. Worth the splurge, I would mm -hmm. say. I'm going to have another one. Those ones were made, like, not too long ago. No, they're so good. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. It's wow. like lemon, rosemary, what else is in it? Mm. No, there's no rosemary in it. No. Olives, it. water, and lemon. Yeah. It's pretty good. That's a very good olive. Yeah. Bon. Let's put this guy away. We're in Greece. <laughs> we did it. We did Kefalonia. Final thoughts on Kefalonia. Um, I had a really great time. Kefalonia, you look absolutely beautiful. I would love to visit you in person. In terms of dishes, I would definitely remake and would recommend to others to make the hordopita, the soup, the cauliflower, and the almond cake. 
absolutely delicious. I'm gonna leave the recipes below. On the creato pizza, the meat pie, uh, it's not, not Kefalonia's fault, but I really bunged that one up, as they say. Um, and so I'm really curious what I got wrong. If you're from Kefalonia, would love to get a comment from you about how to correctly prepare a creato pizza meat pie. Are you supposed to put the rice in cooked or uncooked? And uh, are you supposed to cut slits in the top of it? I suspect the answer is yes, but I'm curious. I think another thing that I'm gonna take away from my time in Greece is a newfound appreciation for olives and olive oil. Um, first, I'm now very curious if olive oil is going to continue as we move further and further east or if it's strictly a Mediterranean thing. Um, super curious about that. Second thing is just a good olive is really, really good. Uh, the trip to McAvoy Ranch was super fun, absolutely beautiful, and their olives are delicious. Like the best olives I've ever had. So that wraps up our time here in Kefalonia, and our next destination is 500 miles to the east in Denizli, Turkey. So do you live in Denizli, Turkey? Have you been to Denizli, Turkey or Western Turkey in general? If so, let me know what are the places I should go to, the foods I should try, and things I should do, and I will do my best to recreate that here in my backyard in California. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!